Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third and last action session. Thank you so much for being here. We have with us the lighting designer Pascal Chatart joining us from Chile. And we have the lighting designer Monica Luz Lobo from Brazil. They will talk about lighting design under an awareness of a new collective and collaborative world. Let's listen to them and make sure that you ask your questions in the chat. We have a lot of time for Q&A this time, and also we will be closing the live sessions today together. OK, so Pascal and Monica, over to you. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. Thanks, Women in Lighting, Light Collective, Formal Lighting, and Archifold for the invitation. Our talk is about light design under an awareness of a new collective and collaborative world. But first, I would like to introduce Pascal Chotard that will share with me this talk. And uh, I would like to, to, to tell you why I have asked him to do so. Uh, Pascal is a great friend, a wonderful professional to collaborate with, and have a very interesting view about feminism, gender equality, and I would like him to talk about that. So please, Pascal, share with us your thoughts. Thank you, Monica. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a huge emotion to be part of this with you. I would like to thank uh, Women in Lighting, Sharon and Martin, and Forma Lighting, and Akifos. I am a big fan of Women in Lighting because I believe that as society, we need to promote women's work and make it visible if we want to rebalance the situation that has been during centuries only in favor of men. I would like to share an activity that was carried out at our office last year as a way of celebration of the International Women's Day and a very few days before the first lockdown. Two women of our studio, Barbara Marambio and Maria Hurtado, organized an open meeting as to share about feminism with all the team. During this activity, they asked us to answer two questions. The first one was, which are the challenges as men and women in the construction of a feminist perspective? And the second one was, what I am or what are we doing to build this perspective? It was very interesting because at the end of the conversation, we all understood that both men and women still have to work together first on the demolition or deconstruction of the male chauvinist perspective. I think that it's a work on process and we have to collaborate with all women and goodwill men as to build together a new feminist perspective. I would like to share a citation of Cheris Kramarai, that I, I love. And it's feminism, feminism is a radical notion that women are human beings. So it's very interesting to, to see feminism from, from this uh, side, I think. Now, after this small introduction, I would like to ask to Monica to explain us, why do you think that lighting design is under an awareness of a new collective and collaborative world? So uh, back to our main topic. Uh, I think that we both, me and Pascal, share the same understanding that work in collaboration is key to bring pleasure and joy to our daily practice. And this kind of thinking begins in-house. So Pascal, tell us how to manage foster this culture with your team? Oh, my, my experience during the last year has been that we are in a never ending work of, or of redesigning and rethinking our internal processes. We are continually trying to improve our creative process and looking for happiness of members of the team. I've 
to recognize that I was deeply inspired by you, Monica. Today, I think that I believe that happy people will design better and happier projects and will make happy customers. So it's a kind of win-win-win virtuous circle. I think that happy people will have a better relationship. So happy people will improve the team communication. In March 2020, at the beginning of the pandemic, we all began working from home and we have been able to operate in a quite normal way because of technology and even more because of the pre-existing quality of the human relationship into the team. We had the chance to be able to come back to work together at the office since past mid-October and we are enjoying enormously the possibility to develop again presential creative processes. And I think that those processes are much more pleasant and effective in a presential way because they are based on human relationships exchanges. Since the year 2018, we have the chance to collaborate with Diana Joas from Brazil. She is a fantastic woman and she helped us a lot in improving our creative process. I know you're also collaborating with her, Monica, and perhaps you can share a little bit of your experience. Yes, I have to say that we at LD Studio have been fortunate to begin at the rethinking and redesigning of our processes since uh, 2017 with the collaboration of Diana Jules, who has worked and is still are, is working, sharing her understanding that a deep analysis followed by a strong concept leads to a great light composition and altogether nurtures a great collaborative environment as Pascal has told so. This method brings a great side effect of promoting trust within the team and build solid relationships. At some point of the process, when this trust was established, we have invited a business consultancy to collaborate on the sustainability of this process. They have set targets uh, and helped us to define what at the beginning they have called cost per man hour, a tool for us to construct the pricing of our proposals. That immediately changed for a cost per person hour, as we have not just men at a team, and now we are building the concept of the cost per happy hour, and I'm not referring to the cocktail time. I think that words have power and build morale. The evolution from man hour to person hour and then happy hour was a collective construction. And I love those two slides because it shows very expressively uh, this evolution. The, the first photo is uh, from our business consultancy, uh, Roberto Siqueira at the beginning. And the, the second one is, is himself in a yoga workshop that we promote to, as an activity to, to promote this uh, improved relationship. And, uh, and now it's clear for us and transparency for the team that relation between what we charge and how we distribute. Uh, and it's one legacy of the pandemic uh, experience, the understanding what is essential. And one quote that really have talked to me uh, on this uh, experience was definition of prosperity. Prosperity is to have what you need, when you need, in the amount uh, of what you need. And uh, I think that the, 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 the um, uh, defining really what is this need is the key. By saying that, Pascal, I think that we can move forward to the outside world. So uh, please, in your experience, how this approach affects your collaboration with other players of our universe. Thanks, Monica. Uh, I would like to share two examples of our way of collaboration out of our team. And the first one is a case of uh, a project of a nursing home that we are current, currently working on. 
And in this occasion, we invite another Brazilian colleague, Mariana Novaes, to be part of our concept design team as to enrich the project with her knowledges. Mariana is investigating light and old people since her master in KTH in Sweden, uh, something like eight years ago. And I think that it was important to share it with all the project team and our clients were positively surprised and appreciate that we add a specialized collaborator to our design team. The second one is an estate project on the beach 400 kilometers north from Santiago when we have done a very deep analysis of the project, including a geographic analysis, a context analysis, a biodiversity analysis, a daylight analysis, and an historic analysis, going till the occupation of the site by native people 2000 years ago. Finally, the result was that the project manager was very happy and thank us a lot because our conceptual analysis allow him to reposition the whole project in front of the CFO and get back on track with the initial concept of the project from the estate uh, company. Monica, can you please share some examples of this kind of collaboration out of our teams? Of course, Pascal. On my side, I would like to share an experience on a multi-purpose space that occupies a whole block in Sao Paulo city, Brazil. And uh, of course, a big project team as usual, architects, interior designers, landscape architects, and graphic designers. So we went through this process, like uh, to have a deep analysis. And uh, it's interesting because at that point, we were working in separately, uh, architect, uh, landscape, all of uh, us working in our own office. And uh, we have this uh, opportunity to show uh, in the, the process of the analysis for the whole team to understand if we are really understanding the desires and the ways that we can interpret the lighting in this uh, case. So it was interesting because our concept uh, at, at the end was that uh, we as lighting designers have the capacity to integrate all these subjects and all these desires and all these disciplines in one cohesive uh, concept. And I think that this is, uh, belongs to us. It's, it's, it's our, our, our way of doing the things. And uh, this last slide that uh, we'll show the it celebrates the, the team and the work in collaboration. This shows my team and LDA Studio and all the, the, the colleagues that works with the architects, the landscape and the graphic designers. So saying that, Pascal, I would like to invite you for our closing thoughts. Thank you, Monica. So, Having in mind this inherent integrative quality of our lighting practice and with the increasing complexity of technology related to that, the importance of expanding this collaborative thinking for a broader crowd like artists, psychologists, researchers, scientists and clients to our teams, keeping in mind that this good vibration begins in-house. Yes. So thank you so much for staying with us and see you at the Q&A. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. See you soon. Hello. I think we are on the Q&A session. Thank you so much for this uh, great presentation about collaboration and about how your teams are working during this time. Um, I'm going to give some time to the audience to hashtag ask and uh, write their questions. I have a few questions as uh, for me, the word collaboration means so much. And uh, I would like to start with Pascal. Pascal, 
Um, can you please share some advice with uh, other business owners who want to expand their collaborative processes? You did mention a few things, but I'm wondering if you can give us some, the, your best advice, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I think that we, we have to practice uh, this and, and set an example. We have to practice it in our team first, with our people at home, and then try to, to expand, then try to, to show to people that it's a, it's a win-win process and a win-win-win process because if we have a good quality of collaboration, we will improve the quality of the project. We will improve the quality of the uh, time we are spending for all the team, and, and we are making people happier. So it's easier to work, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a virtual cycle. It, it, and uh, we have to work on it to be careful, to, to be careful to listen to everyone. And we have a meeting with 10 people, we have to, to take the time to listen really to everyone, even the, the practicer, even the, the, the smaller uh, hierarchy people, we have to, 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 to put him at the center of, of the meeting and, and listen to the his thinkings because it's important to, to take uh, everyone into the process and not to we have to forget about ego first absolutely <laughs> and, and and it's a it's an everyday work it, it, we have to, uh, to 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 work on it every day every a single day a working process right a working yeah, process it's a work on, it's a working process yeah. every, every single day yeah great pascal thank you so much that that's great and you mentioned, you both mentioned on um, your presentation about happy people and how happy people, happy team means better project as well. And, you know, this circle. So I would like to ask Monica uh, a question that I have prepared. Um, so, Monica, you mentioned something about um, happy team and uh, um, it was more about the, the, the hours. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe it's a bit more technical, but I see here, we do have a few questions. So I'm gonna go back to them, but I'm really, really, I uh, would like to know more about um, what you were talking about, the happy team, what happy team means for you as a business and on your processes, and just to elaborate a little bit on this interesting concept. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because at the beginning of uh, 2017, because this process really begin, begins and, and by the end of 2016, uh, the main goal for us was uh, to bring pleasure to our daily life. So the, the idea and the goal was there, you know. So that's why we began to inviting the collaboration of Diana. That is not a, a consultant or a business consultant or someone that is in the market as a professional to reimagine uh, offices, you know. So we thought that the best way to, to start was to redesign our internal process, you know. And in the, in the, in the process, we have discovered that this redesigning uh, make better relationships, you know, because as Pascal said, uh, sometimes, uh, I think that most of the time, you listen to react, you not listen to really understand, you know, so we have to train this to really listen, to understand and collaborate. So I, I think that we make through that. And when we build uh, distrust in the team, that we really listen to everybody, as Pascal said, everybody counts in what we are building. Uh, we thought that would be a nice idea to invite a business consultant. 
because we are we have maturity you know to to share this thing that it's not that comfortable you know because we are designers so design and processes and things like that are our our nature you know but business is not our, our nature but we we have to deal with that and we have to do that to be successful because we we need sustainable uh, offices so we we have invited this this consultant and we 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 have this transparency in the office you know because every friday we have a meeting and in these meetings we share all everything uh, ideas progresses and we build the agenda for the next day uh, week and we talk about money as well so we we always have this kind of uh, understanding of what it is the, what we own what we share what is the cost of the office and this is something that everybody takes part on so i think that this is what i mentioned that is happy hour because happy hour i think is is uh, a meaningful hour is something that is meaningful for you and uh when you when you take this concept and you understand how much is this you know and uh, what is the relation between what is meaningful for me and how i can uh collect money and how i distribute and how these things uh is a cycle uh you you really understand what what is your what you're doing you know absolutely and this is like the the term of collaborative uh, design and also you you mentioned you brought uh, diana which we i think we all love diana uh -huh. <laughs> i'm very glad i didn't know before watching the presentation i didn't uh -huh. know that you have both collaborated with her so and i think uh -huh. i saw her on the audience today so wonderful hi diana and uh I just want to mention this thing that you said you brought in into your um processes you brought an expert on this specific um process Topic. when you were ready as mm -hmm. well to take it a step further and this is again collaborative outside of our team and outside of our the company the team and the and the and the lighting industry as well because you brought somebody else I'm gonna mm -hmm. go to ah here is Diana. I see her on the chat. I'm gonna go to some questions that we have here. So um Saron is asking, what other practical ways can we make our working lives better? Like a uh, four-day week and or maybe more happy hours. I don't know what what is your in May an I? ideal world, but also the one that you you have. Yes, Monica, go ahead May and then Pascal is going to comment as well. You know, one thing that we have, uh, I think it's a legacy as well for the pandemic, is, is, the, is the learning of flexibility. You know, we, you, it, you, we have experienced that. So if, if you have trust, if you really uh, trust in people that you work with and with this home office uh, status, we're not searching for everybody and understanding when or how people is working. We, we, we know that everybody's doing our, their best, you know? So I think that uh, we have earned this uh, understanding of flexibility and, and we really are thinking how we can uh, understand how, when we going back to our physical office, it's not going to be the same as we were before, but I think that this knowledge of flexibility will will take with us. You know, it's it's something. And as as uh, I think she said, uh, I think that we have a kind of a goal to to have a, a shorter Friday. You know, something like that. Nice, we just nice. need to understand this happy hour. You know, because. Uh, work and money goes together. So we want to, we need to understand that. And I love the fact that you're mentioning uh, money as well in the in this presentation, because most of the times, you know, it's kind of like a, a topic that people are not really touching, especially business owners, which I think we need to build more awareness about it and be more transparent and talk to the team about it. And so I'm very, very inspired by that, Monica and Pascal, mm -hmm. thank you for Thank you for doing it. I'm sure your team will be very, very happy to feel and feel more connected and more uh, have a purpose, you know, that, yeah. 
Uh -huh. I think we're talking about this, but maybe it's not the time. Pascal, would you like to comment on uh, Saron's question about yeah, um, yeah. practical at, ways? Yeah, at our office, we, we have a, a four-day four week. We, we work from Monday to Thursday. And on Friday, uh, we, we work only in the morning since about four years now. And since the pandemic, we, we are not working uh, on Friday in, in, at the office. So if we have something to do, we, we take it to the house and we have a, a four day presential work. And how, how say Monica, uh, it's not about hours, it's about uh, job. So everyone know what you have to do. And I think that we have to, to work better and to work less, to be to have a good life out of work. That's very important to be a good designer. Because <laughs> yeah, that's a very good mindset. <laughs> very good. If you if you work ten hours a day, at the end of the day, you, you're not uh, a good designer. You you are not creative. It's not true. Uh, to be a good creative, you have to be cool, relax, to have good sleep, uh, <laughs> to have time with your family, to, to have time with your friends, with your hobbies, and okay, to work, and, and try to work and, and focus, and okay, let's go. But uh, we, we are working on, on working less and, and working better, uh, and, and try to be happier. It's always that, no? To, to have a life out of the office. I think that you, you too, you are the perfect boss for uh, somebody, for a team. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, uh, you know, representing the younger generation of lighting designers, I think that's a great mindset. And I really hope that more business owners can um, follow this approach of working less hours, but working better and in a more um, purposeful way, if this word exists. So yes, I don't know like if what the audience uh, thinks about that. I would love you guys to to write uh, your comments, uh, and so we can uh, we can all get inspired by this. So uh, I think we are very good with time. This is our last uh, live session. So I would like to thank very much Pascal and Monica and everyone that has been a part of this event today. We have uh, the last uh, networking session. So I would like to in, um, invite all of you to come to the networking session and uh, randomly matched with uh, different people. We are gonna have an hour. So it's like the last part of today's event. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know and definitely share with us on social media your best moment, take a, a picture, uh, hold this sign or even write this sign down in a paper and take a picture. We would love to connect. We are planning to have a collage with all of your uh, contributions. So stay tuned and uh, see you in the networking session. Pascal and Monica, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Much. And if you, want to, uh, another, if you want to have some questions, please email us, uh, we're here. <laughs> Absolutely. We are going to be uh, receiving questions from social media as well and uh, sending back to you. Thank you very much. Have a Bye. wonderful rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.